Where are you from? Where do you live? Tulsa, Oklahoma. You live in Tulsa? Yeah. Um, but you you race for Bixby? Yeah. You do. Why, are they just cooler in Bixby? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say. That's what they say. Um, so what is it exactly that you have? They don't really exactly know like what I have, but it's like they say like an inborn um, metabolism thing. They've been like, I fly all over the place, like New York, Houston, Chicago, um, Louisiana, like all over the place, and they still don't know. But I mean, like I used to be really sick, and now like I guess I'm all better and stuff. So you have a, like a, you basically have food attached to you, and you need to be eating at all times? Yeah, because like, like even like yesterday I did the Tuesday night crits and like I got really hypoglycemic because I wasn't drinking my water. Bad Hannah. <laughs> and <laughs> and just just so people know, hyperglycemia is pretty much the opposite of diabetes, correct? Yeah, correct. So your blood sugar when it's too low is dangerous. Yeah, very. It, like if I don't eat something like in thirty minutes, I could probably like pass out, or if I don't have my tube on, or like if I don't have like snacks near me because. I can get really sick and all shaky and stuff. At at your lowest, your mom says that you were sleeping like 20 hours a day. Yeah, like basically in English, because I got a Make-A-Wish trip and everything, they said English I was dying because they only gave me like six months to live and stuff. Oh. They really did give you six months to live? I got, I went to Disney World. And, like, basically what Make-A-Wish means to me, even though it's fun and you get all the trip and everything, it's like the kiss of death. Like, hello, see you later, bye-bye, you know. Mm. Where you're going to have fun and then you're going to go. But that's not what happened to you. No, I mean, because, like, I'm very competitive. Like, my whole family's competitive. It sort of, like, keeps, like, a drive, a will. And I was like, I don't want to go just because they say, you know, you only have this and blah, blah, blah. Like, I want to be a fighter, and, you know, I don't want to just go now. I mean, I felt like giving up, like, 99% of the time because, I mean, you didn't get that much people visiting you. I mean, you sat, it was, like, basically in a nursing home, sort of. And mm. Um, mm. my family, like, was really supportive and stuff. But, I mean, I didn't get a lot of visitors. I was like, but I still got to fight. I mean, you just sat in a boring gray hospital bed. I mean, what is a kid supposed to do while well, everyone's out, like, playing with Barbie dolls and when you're little? It's so sad. It is sad. But now you've turned everything around. Yeah. You I mean, are so competitive, you refuse I to give just, up. Yeah, to give up. I mean, I don't want to give up. I mean, giving up would be the last thing on my list. Um, and so you, when when did they tell you that you had six months to live? I was like six years old and stuff, and like my uh, skull was sagging out of my head, my heart was enlarged. Mm. You, you didn't want to give up, and then you, how did you discover biking i actually before i did uh triathlons i started by running and i said mom i want to do something really crazy and i was looking at the sports illustrated magazine like oklahoma one and i was like i want to do a triathlon and she said well hannah you don't know how to ride a bike and you can't <laughs> swim so you know it's sort of pointless and so i was like i want to try and then so try <laughs> that's funny <laughs> and um <laughs> I did, um, on my bike, for example, I did 10.7 miles in 30 minutes. My average pace was 21 miles per hour. Wow. And I still didn't know how to ride a bike. It was all indoor. <laughs> you were just, you only went that fast because you couldn't stop. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could say that. And um, I took first in my age group, and I was like, I got hooked for a little bit. And I was like, because uh, like, I would like get all sick and stuff, because hypoglycemia once again. And... Um, I decided because I would give it all on my bike because that was like my favorite part. You could go like a crazy machine like Speedy Gonzales and I'd like sort of kill it because that's what I was like first good at was running and then I had nothing left for the run so it was sort of pointless and then I started moving over to cycling and um, first I was really slow. I could like practically run at the same pace I was riding at like 11 miles an hour and I had this wrinkly old bike and chain was falling off, tire rot, uh, brakes were glazed, you know basically nothing and but it was given it was really nice and stuff and um i got a brand sponsorship from fusion and um i took first at state uh, at the crits and i was like dead lost because i had clip-in shoes like you can't move your foot out mm -hmm. of it sort mm -hmm. of thing and i like 
I finally gave up trying to just clip in. I got like three fourths of the mile, and I just had to keep picking up. I wasn't just dead last. I was like very dead last because I was. <laughs> Because I couldn't get it clipped in, and so finally I made it up, and I took second place at state. From that day that you that you first rode a bike to now, now you're like some sort of superstar, right? <laughs> I guess you could say that. I mean, I don't really feel like it. It just feels like, you know, just it feels like all like a blur. Like, all this amazing stuff just happened, and like people have been really supportive in the community, and Bixby Bicycles, like, they're like my family, like. And now there's some camp that you'd like to go to, right? I, there's this, like, town ID camp. I went to a camp in Colorado, and I thought that was, like, the best thing ever. And um, at this town ID camp in Wichita, Texas, like, that's where everyone gets noticed at. Like, that's your big shot sort of thing. You're not just, like, a local hero sort of thing. That's where you expand and, you know, you got, got all these um, famous writers and all kinds of cool stuff. And they teach you, like, they don't just watch, you know, spin and pedal. Like, they teach, like, actual, like, you know, more stuff and knowledge. Um, and what's your uh, what's your ultimate goal? I just, like, when I grow up, I want to be, like, an Olympic person. Like, I want to, or, like, the Tour de France, because I just saw it, and it was, like, you know. <laughs> it's like when you're a kid and you see, like, the ice game, like, oh, yeah, I watched that closely. I can do that. And so, like, you match that. But I really want to do that when I grow up. You know, with all that tubing that you have going into you, they're going to think you're juicing. I'm just <laughs> telling you. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna, I'm going to have a bunch of police officers near me. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be like, oh, she's on the juice. No yeah. question about it. <laughs> it's a cheater. Yeah. What You have such a great attitude. Yeah. You're very positive, a great, bright personality. I mean, you are just an inspiration. Thank you. And super sweet. So you might not one day need any of this. I think I can get it off, personally. I mean, yes, it's annoying right now, and yes, I mean, I'll still have to live it, but, but that just makes me me. I mean, because why, who wants to be ordinary? I mean, yes, sometimes you feel like, you know, when you're a kid and it's in the room, you have this tube attached to you and no one really wants to talk to you, but I mean, that's what makes me me, and mm-hmm. I don't want to change that right now. I mean, I would like to get it off, but I mean, it's not like my biggest concern when I was little. It was your biggest concern when you were little? Yeah, because I mean, I used to get picked on because of it. And like, you know, like saying that there was a bomb or a cyborg and it just really got to me. But finally, I was like, you got to let it go. I mean, it's you can't let it like hold a grudge to you because if everyone just holds a grudge to everything that they say, we wouldn't get anywhere.